it is a privilege when Ashish and Meenu and Shilpa requested me, I, I think you have done a far better job than I had expected. Thank you very much for this kind of thing. What I will be doing for the next two hours, one and a half to two hours, you will have to bear with me, is that first presentation will be most of the presentation would be on clinical past, present and future of mesh in Hanya Sahaji. And next half an hour would be a purely non-surgical, only motivational talk on believe in yourself. Which I strongly believe that it can be other way around also. It is more important. Now, believe me that it is going to be a absolute interactive session. I would be asking questions anyone, anytime and you should also ask me any question anytime so that ultimately all of us are not listening only to the lecture but we are actively participating and by converting this into a play that we are working. So uh, uh, I remember that Albert Einstein was asked what is success? And he said that success is x plus y plus z. And x, what is x? x is work, y is play. And he, he stopped, he stopped and somebody asked from the audience, so what is z? What is z? You said success is equal to x plus y plus z. So he says, z is when to keep your mouth shut. That is more important in success rather than anything else. Now, let us start playing. What is this place called as? Anyone? What is this place called as? What is the name of this place? This is called as? Beach Temple. No, you should be louder. Come on. Beach Temple. Beach Temple. No. Next. Mahabalipuram. No. Next. ITC Hotel. Pardon? This is hotel. Well, ITC hotel. This, this is ITC hotel. And what was that building on? Shore temple. Absolutely. And this shore temple is where? Mahabali. What is what is the meaning of Mahabali Puram? Is it called as Mahabali Puram? What is the name of the place where we are at the moment? All of us are together. Is it Mahabali Puram? Mahabali. Mahamalapura. What I mean to say, can you imagine, in 1995, 1995, the name was changed from Mahabalipura to Mahamalapura. Why? What is Mahamalipura? Maha is great and Bali is Bali. In, in, in Hindi mythology or in Punjabi or whatever, we take Bali like this. So it, the people at, in 90s objected that why should it be called as a place of sacrifice? It should be named after some king and this was Mala and made a Lake. So this is called as Maha Mala Puram rather than Maha Bali Puram. So what I want to convey by this thought is that we should always question. In the morning also we were discussing with Ashish and Ajay that any time and every time we should have a joyful curiosity to know that what are we going to do, what is the meaning of this. So if as representative, and if you are coming to a surgeon or if you are going to any doctor, so if you are having that joyful curiosity, if you are having a child within you which, which is not dying, let us Make sure that the child within us not die. We should remember, you have seen the child, you have seen the children, they will be sitting on the computer and they will be doing this, that and they are always winning the game. When I asked my five years old, long time back, five years old son, that how come that when I am sitting on the console and my, when every time I press one or two keys and the time is, it is set, your game is over. Your time is over. And when you are sitting on the console, you do this, 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 and you are winning race after race. He says that you are afraid. He said at the age of five that you are afraid of competition. 
you think that by pressing on one or two or three keys of the computer, everything will be shut down, it will be deleted, and ultimately you are not curious. I am curious, and that is why I am successful. My thinking is again that this is the place that one should always be curious about. And this was early in the morning when 5:30 a.m. and when I went for morning walk. This is Seashore Shore Temple, and now Albert Einstein has also written beautifully that education is not the learning of facts but the training of the mind to think our thoughts are that information is available so much of information is available on that today but if you are we are always thinking that what next what next then only we will be able to make a difference i i bring Greetings, as she also, uh, Minu also mentioned, that I bring greetings from the Institute of Minimal Access, Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery and Robotic Surgery. And our main focus has been initially in 90s, 92-95 onward into gallbladder surgery and then we did 94, we started our laparoscopic hernia surgery and in last one and a half decade we have been doing more of bariatric surgery and robot robotic surgery. Today I am going to talk few moments on the past, present and now the future of surgical measures. All of us know that all of us, you have been on to this short time or no? None of you. You should get up early in the morning at 5.30 and then go for all the things. It will not take much time, it will take not more than one and a half hours. You can roam around all the temples. Can you imagine that this temple was built in 700 to 728 AD and then because of the cyclone because of and it was dumped into the sand for ages and in 1885 then again it was dug and it was found that this is a short temple which is which is having the Shiva Murti and what not. Similarly in hernia surgery all of us know that when the hernia surgery had started because of non-advent of the anesthesia, because of non-advent of any other sutures or meshes or whatsoever, this was the state of affairs that the patient had to be caught by the assistant and then the hernia surgery had been done. And this is not very long time back, in early 90s. But most of us have seen that so much have, has been dug out from the sand and now in last few years we have seen when I was doing my post graduation in 80s then basically repair was the gold standard and after that I did a thesis on shoulder repair. Shoulder repair was that we were double breasting the hernia layers, the fascia transversalis and that led to lower recurrences. And after that, we came the era of mesh placement. And in 19, initially, when the lichen steam repair was invented or was started, then most of the surgeons, people who were beyond 50 or 55, they were opposing it. That why? Because my hernias have never recurred. And I will carry on doing the basin repair or the shoulder repair. So I will not jump on to the mesh repair. So what I need to say, in order to change the surgeon's mind, it is very, very challenging that you must have experienced in the last few years. But again, the persistence pays. You have to carry on persisting. And now, we can, from all the forums, internationally, nationally, we always say, suture repair is out, mesh is a must. Mesh is a must. Whether it is lightweight, heavyweight, we are going to deal into these kind of meshes later on. But today, if anyone says that he or she does the hernia repair in adult without the mesh, I think he is not doing the justice. So the thoughts are that yes, it has changed in the last few years. And after that, in way back in 1990s, there came the era of Laparoscopic surgery. As I mentioned, that when we started laparoscopic policy technique, can you imagine we had to write in our prescription laparoscopic, not laparoscopic, the patient needs policy technique, for example, gallbladder surgery. Because most of the other surgeons who were near, nearby, they would oppose that why should you go in for laparoscopic surgery? Because 
they could find the excuses. I call this as excusitis. They were suffering from excusitis. So they would always say that the gallbladder stones will fall off, the, the gallbladder stone complete removal will not be there, and so many complications, CBD3 and whatnot and whatnot were there. But because it was driven by the patient comfort, by the patients, by the consumer, I will put it this way, that is why it stayed on and ultimately it became the gold standard. The gold standard for changing from basically to shoulders to ligacy, to laparoscopic surgery. Similarly, for hernia surgery also, the gold standards carried on changing and in 94, 95 onwards, many surgeons adopted the hernia surgery, but again, the challenge was learning curves, the technical expertise. Surgeon had to unlearn, learn and relearn and then only they were able to perform the hernia surgery. So they started placing an MSH. Initial phase, those surgeons who did not train themselves well, they had complications and ultimately they shared it and they never did the laparoscopic hernia repair. But those who persisted and carried on placing in the mesh, they succeeded and now in the era of after one and a half to two decades of laparoscopic hernia repair, now we are going into component separation technique. So what I mean to say, so much of change has occurred in the last three decades that we are and we are happy that we are witness to all this change. We all of us remember that when we used to make a phone call to US, then uh, it will take maybe weeks, maybe days, and then the phone call will materialize, and they will say that yes, this is the time, and now it takes just one fraction of a second, and we are able to make the call. So what I mean to say is, you, we should be ready to adopt, to change, and then only it will make a difference. Now, in hernia surgery, especially, there are three factors which are important. First factor is surgeon factor and mesh factor and the patient factor. Most of the hernia recurrences, believe me, most of the hernia recurrences are because of the surgeon. Don't blame yourself, don't blame your mesh, or that I always say that if the hernia recurrence is there, it is all hydrogenic until proved otherwise. There are factors, mesh factor I, I will be just discussing who believe on blaming, blaming the patient and any time and every time the patient has a recurrence, they would always blame that because you have a collagen free deficiency, that is why the hernia recurrence has occurred. But no, that is not the situation. Usually, normally, it is the surgeon who is at fault, who has not chosen the mesh size nicely, or who has not placed the mesh nicely, or who has not fixed the mesh nicely, and that is the reason that ultimately the recurrence is occurred. So in, in brief, I always say surgeon is the most important prognostic factor. That if you do not learn the technique well, and then if you do not practice it well, then the chances of recurrence are very, very high. In this very same breath, I am not saying that you can be absorbed of your responsibilities. Many times, Shilpa also knows it, and Atisha also, and many people who have, we have attracted is that many times they come to our operation theater, and when they come, and if I start asking them, what is the pore size of the mesh? What is the weight of the mesh? What is the weight? What is the uh, longevity? And after how much time the absorbable portion will get absorbed? And so on and so forth. Most, I am sorry to say, most of people, representatives, do not know about the mesh. Our thoughts are loud and clear that if you want to sell, then sell the sand in a desert. If you are able to sell the sand in a desert, that is salesmanship. That is marketing rather than selling the sand in a snowstorm. So thinking is that you should know each and every aspect of the mesh and then, or, or any product for that matter, and then only go to the war field rather than going to the war field half a
Now, in the last uh, two and a half, three decades, explosion of fascists have been there. So many countries came, so many countries have wound up, so, and there has been a lot of, I would say, confusion for the centers also, which match to the best, which match to good, which match is not to be good. And regarding the study, I am proud, and as Ashish also mentioned, that I am proud that I am associated with your company, as you know, Johnson Johnson, for the last so many years and so many decades. Only thing is because the ethics, the credo, the excellence, the course, the certain education, they have been, you have been doing it so nicely, and that impresses me that you mean ultimately giving benefit to the ultimate beneficial, that is the patient. Patient is God for you, patient is God for us, so we should carry on thinking, carry on changing, carry on planning, so that ultimately whatsoever is the best for the patient, we should be able to. I remember that when Vibro mesh had come, and in the initial phase, when we, well, we started using it, but we are not comfortable because of the bulge it would produce. And then we used to carry on telling these boys that we do not love the micro mesh because it is leading on to very pseudo recurrence later on. So, and after that, all of us know that micro mesh has been withdrawn. Similarly, I am not talking about the negative aspects of it, but I am taking the adversity into an opportunity. Similarly, when the physio mesh also came, and a lot of emphasis was there from your side to impress on the surgeon to use the physio mesh, but again, the physio mesh was also, surgeons were not so comfortable. Why? Because of the way or because of the strength or and it used to be the and it's because of the vegetability. So ultimately all of us know that physio mesh was withdrawn. So what I mean to say, withdrawal is not a sign of weakness. Uh, we always strongly feel and you should also feel that withdrawal is fine if we have realized so many times the Toyota car also withdraws its cars. Why? Because they also feel that somewhere something has gone on wrong and if the withdrawal has been there, so what? That means we have realized, we have realized that yes, it needs a change and it is ultimately keeping the God in mind, keeping the patient in mind, that is more important than anything else. Now, broadly speaking, the meshes are divided into two types. One is synthetic mesh and other is a biological mesh. Now, what is synthetic mesh? It is synthesized in the companies, in the factories, and it, it cannot, the disadvantage of synthetic mesh is that it cannot be used in infected fields. And ultimately, it can lead on, if it is a synthetic mesh, it can lead on to, because of all it is a foreign body, it can lead on to erosion, it can lead on to scarring, it, and ultimately, even the fissurization can also occur, that one should be aware of. But the other part of the uh, development is that this is called as biological mesh, I will, but it is not exactly a mesh, it is a biological graph that we put in. Mesh is a structure, which I will share in a few minutes, is a structure which has a mesh-like structure. That means so many devices are there, whether it is a avoid type, hope pole, or it is a honeycomb type of pole, but pores are there, so it is a mesh-like structure. But whereas in biological graphs, we have to take the tissue out of the animal and then place it into the human mind, human body, and that ultimately has. But the advantage of, so called advantage of the biological meshes is that it is resistant to infection. It can be used in those situations which are infected. Now, in synthetic mesh also, lot of change has occurred in the last few days. What, can you imagine what is this? Green thing? Anyone? This is fishnet. This is fishnet. Absolutely. And, and this was again, if you get up early in the morning, then you will have some kind of encounters. So I took this photograph. They were making the fishnet, and then you can see how beautifully, how easily the 
he has made such a wonderful picture there. But my, what, why I wanted to show this video clipping wall? Now you see the pore size. You see the polyamide material which he is using. If the pore size is big, the small fishes will go off. If the pore size is small, the small fishes will come in. If the pore size is small or small is slightly big, but it does not have the strength of the suture material, or if it, if it does not take the big fish, then even if it will catch the big fish, it can get fractionated, it can get ruptured, and the fish will go out. So our thoughts are, when we are thinking about selling the mesh, we are thinking about using the mesh, we should be convinced that whether the pore size will be adequate for the fibroblast to come in or not. So fibroblast will ultimately help in healing and that will be a body's response to stress. The stress is there, but the body's response to stress will be there by producing fibroblastic activity. And whether the bacteria will be able to cross through or not, that is very, very important. If, for example, I, I should not name it, I am just labeling it as EPTFE mesh. Anyone who knows what is EPT, what is the full form of uh, EPTFE mesh? It is extended polytetrafluoroethylene. Wonderful. So it is extended polytetrafluoroethylene. So this mesh from Gore-Cortex, this did not have the pores. And if they did not have the pores, it was, it was called as a coil rather than a mesh. Mesh has the pore. So why, what used to happen was that when we started using this in way back in 2000, when we were putting this cortex mesh or the EPTFD mesh, the pores were not there, the bacteria will come there, it will not go through the pore and it will get stuck there itself and ultimately if the bacteria colonize, it would get infected and it became a challenging proposition to remove that mesh. And, and we removed, we started using the, uh, use the Gotex mesh way back in 2000, but by 2003 or 4, we were convinced that this is not the mesh which we are going to use because it was more of a foil rather than a mesh. The bacteria, the fish, the small fish, will get stuck there and it will colonize, it will lead to mesh infection and then the totality mesh has to be taken out. Whereas in polyester or polypropylene, they are using the polymide material. So in the polypropylene pro pro mesh from Asimha Johnson Johnson, the pores are such that even if slight bacteria are, are coming towards the mesh, but they will not get entrapped. Even if the stiloma formation is there, even if the fibroblast activity is there, it will not get entrapped, rather it will get encapsulated, it, it will get incorporated into the tissue. This is there is no difference between incorporation and encapsulation. In Gotex mesh, in, in uh, EPTP mesh, the encapsulation would occur all around because there were no pores. So I am playing the importance, telling you the importance of knowing that what are the macro porous and micro porous and uh, a porous measure. So our thinking is that if the pores are not there, the chances of mesh infection are very high, the chances of S plantation are very high, mesh had to be used. Whereas a proline mesh or even polyester mesh, if it is a multi-filament or monofilament, in which kind of mesh and now again a question, not to you but everyone, that which kind of mesh will have more chances of entrapment of the bacteria? Multi or mono? Multi. 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 Why? Because they are bred, so they, they will attract bacteria. Absolutely. Wonderful. So if you can always think about the braid. Braid is what? So go to the Punjabi. So if, if the hair are like this, and if there are multi filament, then the chances are the bacteria can get entrapped in between, and then the chances of, and that was the reason. For example, when we when we are using a sachida, when we are using a suture which is multi silk also, it was multi filamented, then the chances of infection were high and the sinus formation were high. So if you want 
important thing that if it is a mono filament, in this exercise also, in today's morning exercise also, can you imagine that he was using a one single fiber of the polyamide? I asked him that what kind of material are you using? So he was using polyamide, one fiber for making a net. So our thoughts are that if you are using a mono filament, then the chances of mono infection or the infection are definitely reduced. So we should know both are important. Multi-filament versus monofilament, it is important. We know by this very example, the weight of the mesh is important. Initially, when we started using the fibro mesh, which was a torrible, which we used to be absorbed in a few days, it did not provide much of the fibrotic activity in the vinyl hernias. And ultimately, the chances of it were high. Similarly, initially, when we started using ultra pro mesh also, then also the weight was less over-engineered. I, I would put it this way, sorry to be over crude also, it was over-engineered. The proline mesh had a weight of approximately how much? 90. 90. 90. 90. 90. 90. 90. 90. Very good. 90. Very good. Oh, where is Inuva? Uh, she should give the prizes. She should give the awards for the people who are asking, right? So the answer is yes, 90 grams per kg per kilometer square. So 90 grams per meter square is only in mesh. And where is, what is the weight of the lightweight mesh? 40 grams. It is very, very easy to remember. Heavy weight, 90 grams per meter square. Lightweight is 40 grams. And if it is, and in, in ultra pro also, it became slightly lower. And they went back to even 20 grams per meter square. So, sorry, if you are using lesser and lesser, and it would not take the big fish, the big fish will ultimately go off and it will break the shield. So our thoughts are that we, if we know our product very well, then only we will be able to sell. Now in this, the basic criteria of the measure is that it has to be chemically inert. It should not cause thank you, thank you. So it will not cause any infection. Uh, it should not be having a lot of inflammatory response. What I mean to say is that if you install a mesh and if it has a lot of inflammatory response, then the patient will carry on having the pain in the post operative period. All of us are trying to be minimalistic. And if we introduce something which has a lot of uh, tissue reaction, why the suture, why the chromic artery? Now, next question. Why the chromic artery of catheter is not being advocated today? Anyone? Yeah, yeah. Which it involves in the body. Wonderful. What's your name? Nasir Malik. Nasir Malik. Nasir Malik from Sinhala. Alright. Good. So, the, basically it all depends on the tissue reaction. If you, why we advocate to the gynecologist that don't use the chromic catheter in cesareans or even in a cesareans, all the tissue reaction will be more. So, if the tissue reaction will be more, patient will have more pain. And why should the patient have pain today in this app? So our thoughts are, yes, convert them into monofil. What is monofil? Monofil. Very good. What's your name? Neha. Neha from? From Delhi. From Delhi. So, so thinking is that yes, one should know each and every aspect of the product. Then it has to be non-carcinogenic. It should not have most of the time, most of the people, most of the patients start believing that I am allergic to mesh or I am having a hypersensitivity. No, most of the products, they do not have the hypersensitivity, they do not have the allergy, they resist infection. And again, I would say with no lot of clarity in my mind, there is no such mesh which does not shrink. There is no such mesh which does not lead on to no adhesion. What I mean to any mesh, every mesh will lead on to adhesion. Any and every mesh will shrink. So to till date, there is nothing which has come and which that is called as the ideal mesh. There are meshes which are good meshes and who has written this book called Good to Great? So in the next presentation. So the good mesh would be if it is porous and it allows good tissue to grain. If it has to be reactive, then as I mentioned, that if the pore size is good, 
and it's very, very good thinking. One about the net, the fisherman net, which I showed, and another aspect is carry on thinking about the roof. Anyone who has seen when the um, uh, house is being built, then they what they do is that they face a lender pattern. Anyone knows about lender pattern? Yes. If they make the iron rod, they ultimately stitch them together by the wires or by the small wires. And then they put in the cement. And if the poor size is too big, then the cement will cement will be there. And which is providing most then? Is it iron rods or is it the cement? Cement. Both iron on this side, cement on this side. So if this side both, answer is both. Ultimately, it is the iron rods also which they are providing. So what I am saying, it is the proline or the polyester material which is also providing this then. But we are relying on the body response also. We are relying on the fibroblastic cement which body is putting into that pore so that ultimately the stress is there, the fibrosis is there. So our thoughts are that we have to make an absolute balance between the pore, between the cement, then on the inhibit reaction. It has to produce some reaction. If it produces reaction, then only the fibroblast will come and then only the strength will be provided. But it should not become too heavy. If it is too heavy, then the patient can have the feeling of a foreign body or the patient can have some kind of lingering pain later on. But still, I would say that we are using the proline and I will show you the videos also. Ajit told me to show you small video clipping of PA, BP and DP just to emphasize that how the meshes are being displaced by the surgeon. But if it is, we are using the proline mesh to and through and we are very happy with that from Ajit Johnson Johnson. And what only thing is that it has to be flexible kind of mesh. It has to be light wet mesh also. Again, if you want to become from good to great, our thinking is that anticipate these things. Means that if, for example, if you want to be good, I always tell my own education also. If you are good, you are thinking about whatever surgeon is asking, you are giving it. But if you are anticipating, if you are watching the monitor, if you know what next step is going to come and you are ready with the instrument, then only you will become great. And I always ask the nurses and the technicians and the our representatives, do you want to become good or do you want to become great? And they always say that yes, we want to become great. So carry on thinking three steps further up, go to the theatre with complete knowledge about the mesh or the product which you are going to sell and then think about that you have to think about the patient in terms. That means that the pain should not be there. There should be less of adhesion. The adhesion will form, but there should be less of adhesion formation. And then biocompatibility should be there with the tissue as we mentioned, so that the patient does not have any challenge anytime. So what is the ideal mesh today? What is the ideal marriage? How many of you are married? So anyone, anyone from the floor can tell me what is the ideal marriage? What is the ideal marriage? Ideal marriage. To be married in the in 27 of the age. <laughs> one better. One better in the age. Right, next. It will become an ideal marriage. I got married at 27. So it was an ideal marriage. One is Pardon? Compatibility, wonderful. So it has to be compatible. So if you are compatible with your spouse, you get an idea of right? Respect in the relation. Love and respect in the relation. Love and respect for the relation. So what I need to say is multifactorial. But till today, I have not been able to find a single person, single couple who are good. <laughs> we are the ideal couple. We are having no, 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 nothing of that sort and we are there. So similarly our thoughts are that till date there is nothing called as ideal mesh minimum. You, we will carry on working on this, but still that we, the ideal mesh has not come. The ideal mesh has to be porous enough to allow good tissue in growth as we mentioned, reactive enough, inert enough, strong enough so that the early inferences are not there and the flexible, or in life also, we have to be flexible, we cannot be rigid to have an ideal marriage. Similarly, in the mesh also, it has to be flexible, it cannot be rigid. Now, what are the characteristics of the opti optimal mesh? 
So our thinking is that so many factors can play a part, whether it is love and affection, whether it is compatibility, whether it is weight, whether it is tensile strength, whether it is porosity, whether it is surface and elasticity. Can the would you be sir? I will be talking about the ultra low advanced mesh which has been recently launched, which you all of us know. They have worked and they have engineered the mesh in such a way that ultimately the elasticity is added. Most of the time, initially, if you are listening, as uh, Ashish was also telling, that one has to, in order to communicate well, you have to be a good listener. So if you are listening to the sportsmen, if they had the hernia repair done, and after few months and few years, they would always come and complain to us that even if they are running, they feel something, some foreign body, though they cannot, but stretch was there and it was not allowing them that kind of stretching. So elasticity is very, very important. And I know that in ultra pro advanced mesh, they have worked on it. Initially, in ultra pro mesh, it was 2 is to 1 elasticity, horizontal versus vertical. Now they have, in ultra pro advanced, they have changed it to 4 is to 1. That means so much of elasticity has been added, and that is the, again the progress which is going on. Again, as we discussed just now, that one should know again and again. My request is that please, if you are going into a den of a surgeon, then know your products very well, and then you will feel so happy, and surgeon will totally have the trust upon you. Many times, most people ask me that how is it that some representatives do very well and some do not do well. Some always fail, fail whenever they go to the surgeon. My thinking is extra high. Go extra high. If you are going extra high in life also, there is no condition in that extra high. If you know about your, your product, that what is the course like, what is the variant, how much I can, and even then, even if you know about it, but if you are going extra high, sir, this is the patient, this is the sample. I am not saying that this people will sample just like that. Any challenging patient, any deserving patient, this is the mesh you should do so that ultimately that patient will be benefited. You may or may not be benefited, but the patient will be benefited. That itself shows that there is no congestion in that extra mile. Work in that extra mile, then only you will become an excellent, great marketing salesperson rather than anyone. And then again, know about know thy anatomy well, know about product, your product very well. Again, the mesh design, whether it is which material, which filament, I am not going into the details, but one should know that these, all these matter, these things matter, and then only it forms an excellent mesh. If you do not know about this, then you will falter and then you will it. Now, as we have seen the progress in the past, present and future, initially we started with traditional meshes, but later on the absorbable meshes also came, but these absorbable meshes may get absorbed very fast and the patient will ultimately remain the same. Or there are tissues, I will be just touching about this tissue separating meshes. But as we mentioned, that any and every mesh will have the adhesion, but then, then the the first one, what is Kaizen? Anyone? What is Kaizen? K A I Z E L. Kaizen. Yeah, Very nice. What's your name? Jayaprakash. Jayaprakash. Huh? Hyderabad. Hyderabad. So, what is Kaizen? It's a Japanese thing. They are improving every time. Give him a mic. It's a Japanese term. Where the main cause of the Kaizen is. Every time improvement. Absolutely. Fantastic. I'm impressed. Good. So I think those people who are answering, they should get it right. Yeah, and there is something. He was there. He was there. Plus, he was there. So it is a, what is Kaizen? Kaizen is continuous improvement. Any time and every time, every morning, you, we should thank God that we are alive. First. Most important is every morning when you get up, you talk to say, Oh, I thank you, God, I am alive today. One. And second thing is that one should always think that today I am going to improve my own self. The rest of the world is also improved, but I am going to improve myself. 
So this is called as Kaiser. Kaiser is a Japanese technology world, which that is the reason that when they started with Sony or Sanyo or whatever, they were always thinking that they should carry on improving. Similarly, with your company, the Epicon company, they, they have always been working on this, that we should carry on improving. When, when the adhesion used to form, so they were thinking that we should come up with some material which is going to prevent the adhesion. So adhesion preventing barriers for trails is the measure. And then, especially when we were doing the ventral areas, then we used to find that many times we would go into the abdomen, we would find so thick adhesion all around and it became challenging for the patient. And believe me, patients had died almost because of the edemolysis rather than anything else. So our thoughts are that if you are working on Kaizen, if you are thinking about the patient, if you are thinking about improving the mesh, then only the adhesions may not form. I am not saying they did any mesh has come which will never form the adhesions. No, we have not seen that, but there are changes which are occurring. This is a chart which Shilpa had, Shilpa had uh, offered, given to me. And this shows that if we are doing umbilical hernia, ventral hernia, laparoscopic, inguinal hernia, so what are the, what are the methods or what are the mesh which are available. I am not going to be into detail, but you should definitely go into detail and look into it. I have impressed much about the floor size, that whether it is a small floor size or it is a large floor size. Only thing is, as I mentioned, that if you are thinking about rental or if you are thinking about the visual net, just carry on thinking that what is the distance between the two poles. If the distance between the two poles is very big, or if the distance between two poles is very small, that will make a difference of microporous vis-a-vis macroporous. Macroporous will have the large, this will definitely have more tissue can grow and the scar will be more compliant. The patient will be more comfortable. Whereas if you have a small pore, then the bridging fibrosis may lead to rigid scar state. So this is the basic part. Yesterday morning, Ajay, Ajay is here, you know. I was, I was discussing with him and we were discussing about etymology. Anyone who knows what is etymology? Sorry for asking you question. What is etymology? E T Y M O L Y. Study of cells. Study of cells. That science of? Science of tissue and cells. No, I am not able. Give me mic. Hello. Take my mic and give it to me. What is etymology? As I promised that I should become a good interactive chef. So it is a term for the origin of word. Absolutely, fantastic. So my thinking is that so our thinking is that once you carry on thinking, become a cerebral laborer rather than a manual laborer. If you are a manual laborer, if you are we are teaching you, or if you are learning. From the computer, this is the board size, this is the weight, this is the... No. But if you are able to think, if you are applying your cerebrum, if you are becoming a thinking, and if you are thinking that how this world, nylon has come. You are a New York and You are a New York and Why? Yes, go ahead. Well, Give me my fast flow the mic. So both people, New York and London, what happened? Take NY from New York and my letter NY. So what happened? Why, why this is this called a nylon? What I mean to say? Yes, you are absolutely right. The problem, yes, sir. Anu. Is it Anu? Sir, Neha. Neha, sir. So two scientists has, I mean, they have, you know, invented this. Uh, so one was from Naira, New York and one was from London. So they have adapted, uh, uh, they have given a name to this uh, iron product that is called uh, Absolutely. Because the thought is that if you are thinking of new ideas, if you are thinking of ideas, if you are thinking of improving, please do not hesitate and publish it as early as possible or send it across as early as possible. Tell them sharing with people as, as fast as possible. Because if you 
the, uh, the tragedy of the story or the tragedy of the story was the London East uh, scientists were also working and the New York scientists were also working. When they published, the New York people published, then the London people also came along and they said that we have already been working on that and we have made it. So they did a collaborative part and then it is now, all of us know, even the layman also knows what is nylon. So thinking is that carrying on thinking becomes a cerebral labor rather than a manual labor. And, and once you know the core, once you know the components, once you know the core sizes, then you will be able to do. What is this uh, structure? What is this structure? Very good. Uh, give mic to him and move. I, I think best answer would be that anyone who wants to answer can do like this and start asking. What is the structure? Filtered rock. It's a big rock which is filtered and which is at the deep rock. What is this called as? Butter? 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 It is called as Butter Ball and it is in Mahamadapuram, not in Mahamadapuram. And can you imagine that this is a rock which they said they said that the guide, I took the guide in the morning and he showed me this. And they said that uh, this was placed by Lord Krishna. And they, he placed it on this rock. This is a one rock and he placed it in such a manner that it is not being able, people cannot move it. And can you imagine that they employed the elephants to pull it and push it, but they could not do it. I don't know about the sanctity of this god that was done by Krishna and he has made this is called as butter ball and this is very much approximately 1.5 kilometers from here. So please for God's sake, all of us should visit all around, have the joyful curiosity, then only you will be having the joyful curiosity about the meshes also. So thinking is that your proceed mesh is butter ball. Your proceed mesh is such a beautiful mesh that it has tested the times even if when it was implanted. Then and now I have we have been using this proceed mesh. What is the full form of proceed? From where the word proceed comes? Proline plus interseed. Very good. What is interseed? Interseed is Oxidizing regenerated cellulose. Oxidizing regenerated cellulose. Oxidizing regenerated cellulose. What is ORC? This is called as ORC. And proceed is proline, right? Now, what is what kind of proline is there in the proceed mesh? So, so in proceed mesh, there are three things. One is ORC. Just a sec, just a sec. Three things or four things? Three layers or four layers? Three. Three layers. Three layers. Next. So, hold on, hold on. First, let us decide this. Three layers or four layers? Three, three layers. Three layers. So, now tell me, what are the three layers? Divide the three layers. Sir, the soft proline mesh is encapsulated in the PDS. So, PDS is interlocked with the soft proline. And there is a jump of ORC which is being attached in the proline mesh. Wonderful. Yeah. So, so there are two of them. I will put it this way. That there is, this is a proline soft. Under and over the pro, pro, proline soft is the PDS. PDS. What is the full form of PDS? Polydiaxon. Polydiaxon. What is this? Polydiaxon 2. No, what is P D S? What is S? Polydiaxon. So PD, yes. But what is S? Suture. Absolutely. Who answered this? Suture. Good. Good. Very nice. Many times, many surgeons, I am telling you, I am telling you very honestly, many surgeons, many surgical conferences, when we go there and interact like this, many of the surgeons do not know what is PDS, what is monoclonal, he was answering, somebody was asking what PDS. So we have to know it. So now the answer is that it has gone before there. The, the, it is a proline soft. What is the weight of the proline soft mesh in protein mesh? 2. Point. No, no, no. Pro weight, weight, weight. What is the weight? 25. Next. 45. Next. 45. 30. You said 45? 38. 38. 35. 
Você é chique, né? Você vai ver chique. Você é? Não. What is the, let me put it this way, what is the white house and the light house? What is the white house and the light house? White house is the ligament? No. Did you finish the article? No. She mentioned, they have mentioned about the material of the article. No. The material of the article, how can it be light house? How can it be white house? White, white, something white. Pubic, pubic, pubic. Absolutely, good. So it is a pubic, I must pubic bone that is the white house. So what I mean to say that when we go in doing the surgery, follow the bite, follow the bite. I always tell my fellows, instruct them, then follow the bite. First thing one has to see when you are coming on the sea, then light house or the white house is always shining the light and then you will be in the right direction. So if you are able to see this bite, can you see this? What is this is called as? Pseudo sac. This was called as pseudo sac, and we had seen the pubic bone or the pubic ramus, and then again we are following the sac, and, and we are following the bite. Follow the bite. So we have taken care of isolating the fat. Then this is the the cross uh, muscle. On the cross muscle, one can see the nerve, and we do not want to do any energy source building our cells. What I mean to say that if you are clear in thoughts, if you are a cerebral surgeon, if you are a, then you are knowing what are the vessels, where are the vessels, and then you are following the vessels. You see that? This, is, this was the pubic bone of the pubic ramus. This is the peritoneum. So once we take the all the white structure off, that means pubic ramus, pubic bone, then we have taken the peritoneum away. Go to the inferior epigastric nerve vessels there. One has to prevent the injury too, but they are not the gliding force. One should always carry on seeing that we are not causing injury to the inferior epigastric vessels, but once the big peritoneum has been taken down, then we place in a mesh and we place in a chlorine mesh 15 by 12. Normally it is a 15 by 15 centimeter mesh which is there, but again, if you are going to add extra mile, you, if you tell the nurse on duty, that if you cut in such a manner, either side, this side or this side, but if you fold from the cut structure and if the inferior margin of the mesh is complete made, it is straight, then it is not going to be folded in or folded out, then the chances of difference will reduce. This is going extra wide and that will make a difference. And then you can see that we are placing in a mesh and we are placing it with that. We always strongly believe on tacking the mesh or fixing the mesh so that failure is not an option. So that chances of regrets are reduced to minimum, reduced to zero. And in this situation, the, I would still say that the maneuverability of the mesh is very good, especially of the heavy petroleum, that we are able, now you see, that we are able to place in a mesh nicely and ultimately job is done. Then again, PEP and PAP. What is the full form of PAP? Transabdominal pre-peritoneal mesh. And in this situation also, we do, we call this as peritoneum, a single cell thin layer. So we carry on dissecting close to the peritoneum, place in a mesh, and then ultimately fix it. And our answer is loud and clear that we should not go into the blood vessels, insert them and then stop bleeding. So again and again, peritoneum is single cell thin layer. We just use the harmonic. Why harmonic is called as harmonic? What is harmonic? Ultrasonic. Why ultrasonic is called as ultrasonic? Because the harmonic is what is the Absolutely fantastic. So ultrasonic, what is sonic? Sound. And what is the uh, frequency of the sound? Audible sound. What is the frequency? All physics days. 50 to 500,000. But ultimately, the answer is that if the ultrasonic is, if it is more than 55,500 cycles per second, then it is called an ultrasonic. Why harmonic is called as harmonic? Because certain plays harmonium or what? Why harmonic is called as harmonic? You see that? And I believe, believe me, harmonic is excellent. Excellent instrument. If I have a harmonic on my right hand and the hunter master on my left hand, that's it. I do not know, need any instrument for any surgery throughout. Whether it is periodic or leptospermia or anything, spherectomy or not, I love harmonic and I love hunter master. So why harmonic 
this model harmonic. What are types of models? Ninth class. Physics. Who was good in physics? Who was the best in physics? Yes, you were? Yes, it is good in physics. Good in physics. What, what, what is the meaning of harmonic? What are the types of motion? Who's motion? Art motion? Uniform, non-uniform motion. Uniform motion and non-uniform motion. Wonderful. Very good. And linear motion and oscillating motion. Oscillating motion in a around a one axis. Oscillating motion in a one around a one axis in a two or five pro manner. This is called as harmonic motion. So harmonic has been derived from once again the harmonic limb moves like this. So that is why it is called as harmonic motion. And in this situation, now again we have placed in a mesh and we are fixing on the super ligament so that ultimately the chances of recurrence are reduced to minimum. So this is what I Polypropylene, we have discussed enough about the scar and what not. There are meshes which will be had from, which will go, which have gone, but I am not going to the details. But again, as we discussed, that there is polypropylene cross monotrain that we have been using. And then these are the composite meshes. And again and again, the thoughts are that we are bothered about the elasticity and how much it is in size strength and that. A few words about the biological mesh, then we will switch over. And the biological meshes have to be from the animal tissue, either they are from human dermis, porcine dermis, and intestine or whatnot. Lot of uh, biological meshes had come, but ultimately, I would say many of your competitors also mentioned that it is too costly, or you people started telling that it is too costly, but more or less the cost is same as protein meshes. But again, the tissue reaction, the incorporation, the uh, issue reaction was far more and uh, it has not been able to make its own place except for the infected kind of environment. All of us know that mesh shrinkage is there in many places. Most important is patient, most important is that we should carry on thinking to improve, carry on thinking. And this ultra pro mesh also could be added. And in this, the sufficient strength has to be there so that when, when the intra corner pressure increases, then it is able to withstand that. And now this one, this is a uh, recently made of uh, mesh and this is called as uh, ultra pro advanced mesh. What, are, what is the difference in ultra pro advanced mesh? The pore size has been size size of the expansion. Size now, 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 now what was the pore size initially and what is the pore size now? 3 to 4 earlier and now it is 2.7. Yes, one. What is it? Two yes. is to one Earlier it was four is to one. Ultra pro. And at the time of deployment, the ultra pro advanced. Seventy one grams. And after deployment, after absorption, it remains thirty one grams. Very nice. Thirty nine. Honeycomb. Honeycomb. Honeycomb versus the boy. Boy kind of structure. Exactly. 50, 50, 50, 50. 45, 50. It is, it is. It's spring open. Exactly. So, so, what, so what, why, why I wanted this from you? I had a good stint with Tim Collins. Tim Collins in an international learning center for excellence. Again, at this age also, I always found the view that I should get from nothing every minute, every day. And I have learned a lot from all of you today. So thinking is that he had an initial experience in which he published 57 cases and in those 57 cases he has talked about the comparison between ultra pro and ultra pro advanced and you have rightly answered 4 is to 1, 2 is to 1, more size, weight and so on and so forth. So one should know about it that yes we are using this material, so we are using it for the thing and then this becomes definitely better. And I think the time, the manoeuvrity is good. The time is going to tell. We should not rest on our laurels. Yes, yes, since the ultimate mesh which has come, our, our philosophy of thinking is that carry on improving and time will come so that we are able to justify that this is the mesh we were looking for. And we had a class, uh, Shilpa also was in our theatre in Nagara Hospital day for yesterday. And we had to use it. Manuality is definitely good, it's better, but let's see overall regress this way and far now. Or now, any options from the hernia side? We will be drifting or shifting ourselves to the delivery of Now, questions? Yes, sir. Sir, I have a question. Yes, 
First introduce yourself, take the mic, introduce yourself and then start. Very, very fast. We, we, as we mentioned that we started the TAPC in 94, we started the TEP. I went to Barry McCutman. Barry McCutman was a person who started the TEP in Atlanta, in Georgia, in 1995. And then, then again, guys, that many patients, I would say 99 or 95% of the patients, would be satisfied with TEP and TAPC. But there are a subset of patients who are having really, really, really great hernias who are having really, really, really different hernias or mental hernias, for them, laparoscopic icon was not enough. And now, for the last, I would say, five to six years, the change has been there, and it is extended, or expanded, DEP. And now, for the intra-abdominal mental hernias, lot of progress is going on. Lot of uh, dissection, and we had a recent conference also by Ravana in New Delhi. And so much of tissue dissection has been done, or so much of, I would say, micromanagement is being done so that we reach the target of giving a patient zero recurrence. Till date, the zero recurrence has not come. And in this era, if, if you want to become only the hernia specialist, nothing like grab on to the abdominal wall reconstruction, grab on to the hernia surgery, grab on to the ether, and lot of scope is there. So it is, it is being regenerated, the interest of the surgeons is being regenerated because of the death. Only thing is that one should know you are not dying. Surgeons surgeon should know you are not be very well. There are tissue pains, there are between the anterior rectal sheath, between the rectus abdominis, and between, between the anterior you know, external of the internal of the transverse abdominis, and so on and so forth. And there are many nerve fibers, there are many blood vessels. So, neurovascular bundles have to be reserved. So, one should learn it well and then only offer it the best patient and then only it will test the fight. Otherwise, if you are just jumping on, and I have seen so many surgeons jumping on to the wagon and causing complications, that is not just Again and again, whenever I am doing surgery, whenever we are doing anything, failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. We should learn it well and graduate it well, slowly we should go, inch by inch, I am in this video clipping also, I am going to show you, inch by inch we should carry on progressing, so that ultimately we do not harm all of it. Does, does any other question? Sir, uh, just a question, does hydrophilic mesh or hydrophobic mesh increases the fiber velocity activity of a uh, very mesh? Very good. These are the points, these are the micro points. Definitely. What is hydrophilic? And what is uh, hydrophobic? So yes, it changes the perspective. The hydrophilic versus hydrophobic, the fibroblast activity is different. Hydrophilic is different. Yes. Good. If you either then go for the fifteen by twelve measures of other company, is there any difference between fifteen by fifteen or it's a surgeon's choice? No, it is not a sentence, right? I would say that all of us have to carry on learning. In the initial phase, there are surgeons who are using a smaller size mesh. And they were using, they were trimming it so much that they were making it a maybe 12 by 10. And they were thinking that they have done enough of this section and they were just going to the mesh. But those patients had the So we have realized in the last so many years and so many guidelines have also come. That 15 by 12 is the minimum size which should be implanted. If the patient is having really, really, really correct hernia, it is better to go on a larger size mesh so that ultimately all the defects, direct, indirect, immolar, after recurrence, all the defects are covered by at least 5 centimeters around. If you are making sure the failure is not happening, if you are making sure that coverage overlap is all around, by 5 to 4 to 5 centimeters, then the chances of victims will be reduced to good business. Yes, sir. Sir, my name is Chirian. Um, yeah. We met in the morning. Yeah. yeah. So, my question is, as a surgeon, for a patient, uh, polypropylene mesh is good. Or is it polyester? Because polyester mesh is also there in the market. And my thoughts are, as a surgeon and keeping the patient at the center, um, what are your thoughts on? I, I, I am sorry that I am using these words, but I am very, very, very 
a lot that I have come here to be in front of you. I don't love Bollywood at all. I love Bollywood because of the issue it shows, because of the pyroblastic activity. The polyester has more reaction to it, and that is why we were uh, using the polyester uh, surgery uh, that was called as uh, what suture. The yeah, SP bond, SP bond. We were using the SP bond suture a lot, but ultimately it was polyester, and it was causing more tissue reaction. And that this grew, and this, that this polyester was more of a multi filament and that could, could cause more of colonization of the bacteria and that could lead on to infection and sinus formation. So I don't doubt it would not come out and that is why it is not in hope. We have not even heard about polyester science today. So thinking is that yes, polypropene is more better than polyester. So, so, sir, uh, I will go from Delhi, sir. Yes. Yeah. My question is so, regarding proline and proline softness. Yes. Because most of the time it happens that whenever we go and meet any surgeon, some of them like uh, proline soft and some of them don't like. They, they are happy with proline only. They are saying he is more of a surgeon skill than a mesh. So we are very happy with proline. We do not require the proline soft. So your perspective about this? I, I would say that as I mentioned in the initial phase of my presentation, surgeon is the most difficult person to take. The most difficult person to take. They are they are not attentive to a job. I, I face daily the challenges of robotic surgery. When I sell the robotic surgery for morbid yogis, 200 300 daily patients, they always say, no, we have been doing my laparoscopy method is fine. So it is very, very difficult, very, very difficult to change. But again, the answer, the specific answer is that we have not reached the conclusion to it. You should always present this way that we have not reached the conclusion. We got comfortable with the proline mesh. I am comfortable. If you want to use the proline soft, I am still comfortable. Both are my products. One. Second thing is, I am much bothered about the fibrosis. The fibrosis, which is the proline uh, heavyweight, is going to have more fibrosis rather than proline soft. And it is being engineered that approximately 45 grams per meter per meter square for protein is good enough to do maybe overdoing by putting in heavy treatment. So the uh, other, question, other question is related to this only. Uh, this is regarding PAM and proline mesh. So partially absorbable mesh. Some people are saying that we are happy with proline only. Partially absorbable mesh we do not require. We are talking about the flexibility and other perspect of this tissue integration is for us. So all these points we are talking about, but they are saying that this proline is more than sufficient for us. Absolutely so, right. Absolutely right. I would put it this way that okay, go with the data. Go with the data. Numbers on life. Then they will believe it. Give them the literature that yes, there is a comparison between PAM and this is proline, and this is the latest one. If you still want to continue with proline, nothing like that. If you want to continue with that, nothing like that. So our thinking is again and again, data, hard, lines, and details, carry on thinking, carry on telling us the data, they, they may or may not change, but I will. Uh, sir, just a question, like we have seen if any patient has any one side of hernia, such as two bilateral hernia or uh, laparoscopic hernia. What the chances are that uh, all the surgeons are now moving? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The question is whether you are going to do the prophylactic hernia repair or not. We don't believe it. Our thinking is that there are so many problems all the time. Rather than work on those problems which are not there. So problems which are there, we can always do it. But if, if, for example, if clinically, if you find that there, there is a slight bulge, if, then you can always tell the uh, patient that yes, look, I will put in a scope, I will see the contralateral side also by doing the TAPP method. And in, in that, if I find a hernia, I will repair it. But if I don't find a hernia, I will not do it. Otherwise, many, many, many patients come to us, sir, XYZ surgeon says that he will do both, and you are saying you will do only one. So I always justify by saying that yes, I will not do the appendicectomy, I will not do the cholecystectomy, I will not do the hysterectomy along with, I will do all the, the I will solve the problem which is there rather than solving the problem which are not there.
But again, if you also people are there, some will look at that people will carry on justifying. Every criminal has one justification. So they will carry on justifying. Yes, this is the right answer. Sir, yes, sir. I have a question, sir. Sir, we uh, to the believe in person. Sir, uh, what are your preference uh, in deploying tags in the mesh? In, in what, what are your site of uh, deploying tags? Tacker, uh, tacker, tacker deployment sites. Yes, when you are placing the tags, then make sure that you are approximately one centimeter away from the margin of the mesh. Many times I have seen that the people deploy the tags just close to the margin. And then, if this opposite I told you that the mesh will sink, so if the mesh will stay there, then that will become a weak area, that will cause more differences. I have, we have got so many, I did not want to talk about the complications in this forum. For so much of the applications we have come across, that brings the tags ultimately of the mesh gets hung, the tags are there on the tissue and the hernia goes there. So one has to be approximately 1.5 to 1 centimeter away from the margin, and the distance between the two tags should be such approximately 1.8 centimeter, so that the intestines are not linking in to the margin. That is very, very important. And then all around the defects also put in a one row of tags so that the bulge does not occur. So do you, prefer, do you prefer to tack on the Hooper's ligament or pubic surfaces? Uh, we always place it on the Hooper's ligament. Why? Because if you put it on a bone, if on a pubic bone, the chances of osteitis are definitely higher, pain will be higher. I, do, I definitely, I'm bothered, I'm sensitive. I will put it this way, over sensitive. If the patient gives me a phone call, sir, after the surgery, I'm having a lot of pain in the pubic region. I start thinking about osteitis pubis. So if the patient says about fever, I start thinking about the mesh. Our my mesh should not get infected. There are surgeons who will carry on doing the mesh hernioplasty with the gallbladder uh, surgery also, black body also. But we always advocate, no, you know, I am afraid of rabies and rabies is lethal. I do not want to see even one case of rabies. What I mean to say, I do not want that even one mesh is to be infected. If the mesh gets infected, the patient has it, surgeon has it, all of the all of the country enjoy that. Thank you very much. I have one more question. Sure, sure. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. From uh, uh, from uh, uh, your perspective on iPhone, iPhone Plus or uh, yeah. iPhone, uh, iPhone Plus or double crown technique, is there any difference on outcome uh, between iPhone, iPhone Plus and the double crown technique? And double? Double crown. Double crown is the difference between iPhone and iPhone. Yes. Crown. Is there any difference between these three? Yeah, it's what I'm saying. The in outcome wise? Yes. We initially, when we, all of us were doing the iPhones, and we were happy that there is no difference. And I always used to feel that the my face is not happy. You can say other surgeons always have to But ultimately, believe me, there are situations in which the defect is more than 10 centimeters, more than 8 centimeters, more than 5 centimeters. And if we start closing it, then the tension was built, built up. And then if you place in a larger size mesh, the chances of effects are reduced. But still, some patients had regrets. Then we started thinking that even if the serum formation is low, even if the regrets is low, why not dissect this rack completely, suture the defect nicely. So that added on the extra mile is called as iPhone Plus. And definitely it has reduced the serum formation, it has reduced the chances of regrets. The uh, the double crowning technique is putting the tags into the mesh, but double crowning, as I mentioned, means that you have to put in one row of tags all around the margin and then all around the margin of the defect also. That would imply two tackles rather than one tackle. And that may be an overkill. That may be an overkill, but ultimately we have realized that there has to be some flexibility in the marriage. So we have we go in for one tackle for one patient, we finish it off and we do it all around the margin of the defect, but some way we slightly distance ourselves, not exactly 1.8 centimeters, so that the chances of the are In some of the cases, surgeon says in IPOM plus we are creating uh, unnecessary tension on the abdomen. That is saying, it is good to have control. It is always good to have control. It is always good to have control. It is always good to Progress. 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 Progress.